We've all seen this before. If you take a piece of paper and let it go, it will float to the ground. However, if you take that same piece of paper and scrunch it into a ball, you'll find it will drop like a rock. What's happening here? They both weigh the same, so why does one fall faster than the other? Hundreds of years ago, astronomer and physicist Galileo Galilei worked out that the weight of an object is irrelevant. The only thing that is slowing down the fall of a piece of paper is the air. Crumpled, the piece of paper encounters less air resistance than it did unfolded. In 1971, during Apollo 15, Command Pilot David Scott allegedly performed an experiment to confirm Galileo's findings. Well, in my left hand I have a, a feather, in my right hand a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago, who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon? And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? How about that proves that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. If Scott had dropped these two items in an atmosphere, the hammer would fall faster than the feather. Propagandists love this video because they say that the hammer and feather arriving on the ground simultaneously is proof that the scene were filmed in a vacuum, and thus on the moon. In reality, this video proves just the opposite. Other conspiracy theorists have argued that the feather dropped could easily have been made of wire and the playback speed slowed down to simulate gravity. However, that is not my prime argument against this experiment. First of all, we must take into consideration that space is a vacuum and lacks air. Right from the beginning, both the Russians and the United States were faced with the challenge of designing a capsule that could withstand a cabin atmosphere. After all, once in the vacuum of space, with no external air pressure, the internal pressure would push against the inner walls of the spacecraft. The challenge was designing a craft that could withstand the internal air pressure. Put simply, the Russians being in possession of the mighty R-7 Simyorka, were able to lift a thick-walled capsule strong enough to sustain a sea-level nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere. The United States, however, lacking the heavy lift booster, had to make do with lightweight capsules that could only withstand a low-pressure single-gas atmosphere. In this case, 3 psi for Mercury and Gemini, and 5 psi on Apollo. Had these capsules used a sea level pressure in space, they would have ruptured. Likewise, both nations faced this problem when their cosmonauts and astronauts were to embark outside their spacecraft. Providing thick-walled spacesuits was, and to this day, is impractical and so both nations needed to design a light suit that could withstand a pressure low enough not to rupture the suit, but high enough to keep the spacewalker alive. After all, during the Mercury project, it was discovered that the safe pressure limits for breathing pure oxygen were between the limits of 2.9 psi and 6.66 psi. As was the case with any conventional spacecraft, 
in a vacuum, with no air on the outside of the suit, the air on the inside would push against the inner walls and cause it to expand. We've all seen this doctored photo of Michael Collins, which of course was originally taken in the KC-135. Please note its creases. As Ralph Renee stated, the suit's wrinkles deny that it's inflated. Now compare this photo of Collins practicing aboard the Vomit Comet with this video of Edward White walking in space on Gemini 4. The balloon inflation of White's suit is immediately obvious and is noticeably missing in both the EVA training videos and also the moonwalk photos. How could an astronaut in a pressurized suit wander around in the vacuum of space without his suit showing signs of inflation? The lack of inflation was brushed off as being a result of the suit's internal restraining layer, preventing the suit from bulging outward. However, Edward White's spacesuit also had a restraining layer, as do the space shuttle suits. In spite of the presence of this layer, White's suit is clearly ballooned like the Michelin Man. So what was the actual pressure in those spacesuits? What I can confirm is that the Space Shuttle EVA suits were pressurized to 4.3 pounds per square inch. Whereas the Apollo suits had an internal pressure of 5.2 psi. Yet, as shown by this famous photo of astronaut Bruce McCandless, the shuttle spacesuits appear to be the ones that are more inflated. Interestingly, on his website, ApolloHoax.net member Phantom Wolf denies that the Apollo EVA suits were pressurized to 5.2 psi, but rather 3.7 psi. The Apollo suits were indeed pressurized to 3.7 psi once the astronauts got suited up. However, this was not always to be the case. The LEM had a cabin pressure of 5 psi pure oxygen. Unlike the shuttle, the lunar lander lacked an airlock, meaning the interior of the LEM had to be depressurized before the astronauts could exit their spacecraft. According to the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal on NASA's website, Prior to the partial cabin depress, they had inflated their suits to a relative pressure of about 3.7 psi. Now that they have dropped the cabin pressure from 5.0 psi to 3.5 psi, the relative suit pressure has increased to about 5.2 psi, and will now decrease due to the breathe down and the operation of a pressure relief valve which opens at relative pressures above 4.6 to 5.4 psi. But according to other sources, the relief valve never decreased the suit pressure until after it hit 5.5 psi. And an exhaust valve for exhaust oxygen when the pressures go over 5.5 psi is installed on the left wrist. And elsewhere on the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, Eric Jones states that the relief valve normally bled out excess air when the suit hit 5.3 psi meaning that the normal suit pressure was 5.2 psi. Usually, this meant that the valve was closed, but when the suit circuit pressure exceeded 5.3 psi, the valve would open to relieve the excess into the suit circuit. Interestingly, as Ralph Renee points out, on page 117 of Carrying the Fire, Michael Collins claims that his Gemini 10 suit was pressurized to 3.7 psi, the same pressure that Phantom Wolf claims was inside the Apollo suits. Because Edward White was wearing the same spacesuit, it must also have been pressurized to 3.7 psi. 
Again, compare this video of Edward White on his famous EVA with these moonwalk pictures. If both these suits had an internal pressure of 3.7 psi, as Phantom Wolf and Michael Collins claim, why is only White's Gemini suit showing clear signs of inflation?